At this point, highly confident that we'll get to orbit this year. That's what Musk said during the Starship update back in 2022, and now after nearly a year, SpaceX finally appears to be approaching this outdated goal. Testing and work on the nearly 400 foot tall Starship and Super Heavy rocket booster has been ongoing at SpaceX's facility known as Starbase for months. After a series of high altitude tests and landing attempts with Starship prototypes, Elon Musk's company plans to conduct an orbital test flight as soon as February or March. March. Last week, SpaceX completed a few milestones in an effort to move toward that test flight. The company said it completed Starship's first full flight wet dress rehearsal, which included loading Starship and the booster with more than 10 million pounds of fuel. Today's test will help verify a full launch countdown sequence as well as the performance of Starship and the orbital pad for flight-like operations, SpaceX tweeted on January 23rd. Following a successful wet dress rehearsal, Starship 24 was de-stacked from Booster 7 in preparation for a static fire of the booster's 33 Raptor engines. When SpaceX fires up all 33 Raptor engines, they will rock the Texas coast. But before such testing, Cameron County, Texas officials will announce temporary closures for part of Highway 4 and Boca Chica Beach. The residents in the small beach side community of Boca Chica will also be notified. Should the static fire test go well, SpaceX will face one final hurdle before the rocket's first orbital flight, a launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration. More specifically, they're waiting for the FAA to grant said license. The FAA completed an environmental review in June, allowing Starship orbital launches to proceed from Boca Chica, but requiring the company to implement more than 75 measures to mitigate environmental effects. That was back in June of 2022. Neither SpaceX nor the FAA has provided updates on the progress of implementing those mitigations or the status of a Starship launch license. However, the FAA, in a statement on January 12th, said that not all of the measures need to be completed before issuing a launch license. So which is it? Do you want all 75 or do you just want most of the 75? Make up your mind, FAA. The time frame for SpaceX to implement the more than 75 FAA required environmental mitigations for its Starship slash super heavy program varies, the HC said. For example, some measures must be completed prior to launch while others designed to occur during post-launch activities or following a mishap event. The FAA will ensure SpaceX complies with all required mitigations. For now, SpaceX has yet to announce a target date for the Starship and Super Heavy orbital test flight, but somewhere in March seems like a more probable time for launch. However, not only SpaceX, but NASA is also looking forward to this historic flight. The world has never seen a vehicle like Starship before. If successful, the massive spacecraft would open up new possibilities for the space industry industry not before available. This is because Starship could realize the long-desired goal of rapid, low-cost reuse of a launch system. Consider the status quo. The large space launch system rocket under development by NASA will be able to launch 95 metric tons into low Earth orbit. NASA and its contractors, led by Boeing, will be able to build one a year. The expendable vehicle will launch one payload at a cost of about $4 billion per mission, and then drop into the sea. In in terms of lift capacity, the vehicles are similar. Starship and Super Heavy should be able to put about 100 tons into low Earth orbit. However, SpaceX is already capable of building one Starship a month, and the plan is to reuse each booster and spacecraft dozens of times. Imagine the kind of space program NASA could have with the capacity to launch 100 tons into orbit every two weeks instead of a single annual mission for $4 billion a year. Seriously, pause a moment and really think about that. In their decision to select SpaceX for the human landing system, NASA officials appear to recognize this potential. We were looking to see what industry partners could bring in terms of innovation and solutions, said Lisa Watson Morgan, the human landing system program manager. The emphasis here is on innovation and new solutions to old problems. In picking the Starship architecture, NASA is helping enable a path toward a super heavy launch vehicle, in-space propellant storage, in-space refueling, and large up-and-down mass to planetary surfaces, said Tripathi. 
who has examined these problems from both NASA and SpaceX's perspectives. To put it in another way, if Starship is successful, NASA no longer needs to pick just one or two big things to do in space. The agency will be able to do many different things at the same time. But more importantly, Starship will transform space science to degrees none can even begin to understand. Starship, by its design, can be refueled by other Starship vehicles in Earth orbit. This means it could hypothetically carry a huge amount of mass around the solar system. You could get a 100-ton object to the surface of Europa, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk said in a public meeting of the National Academies in November of 2021. That is five times greater in performance than the very best the SLS can offer, even in its final configuration with a kick stage. Starship is also forecasting to be significantly cheaper, although whether it can hit Musk's optimistic projections of less than 10 million dollars per launch remains to be seen. If they get anywhere near that cost, it's kind of an analog to a 747 and a shipping container all in one. That's going to be used throughout the solar system, says Robin Haig, former head of launch at the UK launch company Skyrora. With a thousand cubic meters of usable volume, Starship is also big enough to fit the entire Eiffel Tower disassembled, though not powerful enough to lift it into orbit. This gargantuan capability led Jennifer Heldman, Jennifer Heldman of the NASA Ames Research Center and her colleagues to publish a paper on what sort of equipment Starship could carry to the lunar surface or even the Martian surface. Refilling Starship in orbit effectively resets the rocket equation, allowing for large payloads to be transported to the moon and Mars. They wrote, a reference to the fact that the more mass you want to launch, traditionally, the more thrust you would need on an exponential scale. Starship is not limited to these destinations, though. It's not fine-tuned to either the Moon or Mars. The goal for Starship is to create this more generic, larger-scale exploration capability, says Margarita Myronova, a former senior Mars development engineer at SpaceX. Ideas include launching full-size drills rather than pint-sized versions, where you can put a 100-foot or 30-meter drill on the vehicle and then just deploy it, Heldman says. You don't have to try and fold it up. That's exciting because you can drill down into ice on Mars, which is very important for sustaining human exploration and also the search for life. Starship could conceivably also offer a two-way delivery service, returning vast quantities of material to Earth from these and other worlds. We've always been very cautious about the samples we return because we've been limited by the amounts of mass, Heldman says. With Starship, you can just load up that vehicle with rocks and ice and whatever else you find. Meanwhile, Starship's unique capabilities could be used to launch a wide variety of next generation generation space telescopes to revolutionize astrophysics. For the sake of it all, I really hope the latest Starship timeline will actually come to fruition. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX, and as always, if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, my team and I will see you next time.